so it's uh, even difficult to speak about violations of human rights because we have something absolutely extraordinary. On one hand, it's massacre. It's really massive killing of people from the distance of zero, hundreds, and then it was 1,300 people who were killed or in their beds or dancing on the music festival in huge numbers. And at the same time, it is like the biggest pogrom in modern history when victims were not only killed, they were raped, they were burned alive, uh, the houses and the whole villages were destroyed. Uh, if you read the historical big pogroms in Kishinev or the times of civil war in, uh, uh, in the Russian empire, uh, it, it, this description of those pogroms, which seemed so awful, or even if you go back to 300 years ago, Bogdan Kvinitsky, this one is even more awful. In fact, we try to make sure that our children don't, or our grandchildren don't hear the news because of the description of the awful things. But I think we ourselves did, didn't yet digest, didn't apprehend what a awful, unprecedented pogrom took place. But you know the difference? Not like the all the previous pogroms. It was all on the internet, meaning that if the, uh, those who were making pogroms really try to hide it from the world because they uh, want, if they want to continue what they were doing, they understand that the world should not know what's happening. In this case, they were killing people, they were burning people and putting it on the internet immediately. In one case, they put it on the Facebook of their victim, in order of the family, their relatives, their friends will see what they are doing to them. Uh, so uh, this uh, powerful connect combination of the biggest massacre, not the, the biggest, but one of the big massacres in modern history, and by far the biggest and most cruel pogrom at the same time, uh, make it obvious that uh, <laughs> to speak here about violation of human rights, violation of international law, there is nothing to talk about. And at the same time, those who were making it known to the world, they first, on one hand, they wanted to uh, make us desperate, to, to humiliate us, to make sure that we will not have any, uh, we will be uh, paralyzed by fear. And of course, they were absolutely wrong about it. But on the other hand, they hoped that the world will treat it with understanding. And here I have to, uh, to say that after all, our organization is committed to, to show them to the world again and again the connection between old and new antisemitism. What is all our struggle for recognizing international, accepting international definition of antisemitism? All this is about that criticism of Israel at some moments can become antisemitic. The demonization of Israel, demonization of Jewish people, are, uh, are both anti-Semitism. And here we have like the moment of moral clarity. There is no discussion that is the biggest anti-Semitic event since Holocaust. Everybody will agree that it's pure, the most primitive, the most rude anti-Semitism. And then we have reaction of some, not many, but some intellectuals and student organization of Harvard and Stanford and Penn uh, University, that that's part of anti-colonial liberation movement. That's part of resistance, may, may be sometimes uh, not absolutely fair, but definitely legitimate resistance of uh, Palestinian people to Israeli uh, oppressors. So if you want to have better proof how this fight against Israel and this pure anti-Semitism are meeting, and in fact, uh, uh, meaning the same, that's the most clear uh, uh, clear proof that, uh, yes, hate to Israel and hate to Jews go together hand in hand. And it is very important that the free world will recognize this very deep uh, connection. 
Is it, you expect that after all these unbelievable uh, crimes and then demonstrations uh, of solidarity with the criminals, that at least the leaders of the intellectual world, the leaders of those universities where these demonstrations are taking place will make it very clear that uh, anti-Semitism is anti-Semitism, pogrom is pogrom, and we condemn and we'll do everything that, uh, uh, and we have to do everything that those who are responsible for this will be punished. Instead of this, we are here. No, there are many organizations, many people, and many leaders of the free world who are expressing their solidarity and their anger and condemnation. But the leaders of the leading academical institutes are speaking about to stop violence on both sides, like uh, President Putin called to stop violence. Well, Russia has invested interest. Their closest partner is Iran, and Iran is behind all this. But the leaders of academy, they can speak about violence on both sides when we have the most awful, unbelievable pogrom. I have to say, to this day, we are not ready to tell ourselves the full picture, and the one who is exposed to the real horrifying stories and knowing how much we keep as a secret from our own society, because we cannot really believe that that's what's happening in Israel, in the modern world, in our times, uh, when people can know immediately and they know immediately the truth, what is happening, and they can tolerate it. It has to be removed immediately. The Hamas has to stop existing in this world. That's threat to existence of the state of Israel, but that's also uh, free world cannot accept that there that uh, people who are making these crimes today uh, will keep existing. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, if in case of, let's say, Ukraine, that I'm very much involved and I condemn the crimes of, of Russia, and I do hope that the international court will bring to justice Russian leaders for their crimes. Here, you don't have to even to collect any proofs. <laughs> That's by the most fundamental definitions that the biggest massacre and biggest pogrom in the modern history made with sadism, with uh, uh, with all the aspects when we speak about Daesh, when we see these awful uh, pictures of beheading the people. Here it was all. It happened simultaneously in hundreds of the peaceful houses uh, with the thousands of youth who were dancing on the music festival, and uh, uh, we have no choice. We have to destroy Hamas, it has to stop existing. It has secret weapon, and I wrote about it on the first day of the war in Washington Post, that the secret weapon of our enemies are their own children and their own peaceful uh, population. They will use them as uh, shield, a living shield, and they will try that that as many as possible of their own children will be killed in order to mobilize the world to, to protect them from us. And the world should not permit them to go away with this crime. Thank you.